So today's vlog is going to be a little bit different than pretty much most of the ones we've ever done before because it's going to be a little bit more of an, uh, an assembly than anything else. So for the past while, I've been playing a little bit with, uh, with these. These are these little, like, basically portable handheld typewriters. They're not quite computers, but they can be plugged up to computers to transfer text called Alpha Smarts. And, you know, I was screwing around with them a little while ago, but I came across... This was actually the first model I got, and this one, right now, it's it's off, it doesn't work, it's completely dead, but uh, this one, the keys are awful, sticky, and uh, yeah, as you can tell, the on-off doesn't actually work, but I came across a thread a while ago on the internet that detailed about how you can basically turn these things into, uh, well, not into mechanical keyboards, but using mechanical keyboards, so, and I'll detail the... Uh, the full process in the description with uh, links to all these things, but basically there's one internet forum, I can't remember exactly where it is off the top of my head, but uh, there's a guy in the thread who makes these. These are actually like standalone kits to put in those to build the mechanical key switch on here. This isn't soldered in yet, but they have a switch there, just put there for your sake. So the keys are, you know, we have to do all the work, but there's a kit that's provided and you can basically build it around. And that's what I'm going to be attempting to do today. So what the kit essentially includes, the kit includes the uh, the PCB, like I was saying, it includes the two connectors and the cables for the connectors, and a couple of the switch casings and like, for the stabilizers, and that's about it. Everything else you're going to have to buy on your own. So I'll try to remember to include links to the parts that I used, but you can basically build this however you want. The only thing you're going to need is, well, you're obviously going to need your own Alpha Smart. You're going to need a, a PCB mounted switch of some kind. We're using, um, I forget exactly what brand they are, but they're, it's such with a, a G post, we can correct this, but they're, they're blues, which is why you may or may not be able to hear that. Uh, you're going to know, have to know how to solder a little bit. I've got the construction manual down here, by the way. That's why I'm looking at You're going to have to know how to solder a little bit. Kind of important. I'm not the person to teach you that. I know my own skills, and that's about it. And a uh, whole bunch of uh, keycaps. The keycaps are the things that I'm still probably struggling with. I'm not 100% sure I'm going to have that completely correct by the end of the night if I have time to finish this assembly today. But I do have a set of keycaps, and I just purchased pretty generic keycaps on Amazon. As long as they're they're flat and not molded to like the specific layers of the keyboard, you should be alright with basically just about anything you can find. So that's really all it is. I bought a pack of these, you can get about a hundred of these for about 25 bucks if you know where to look. Um, the keycaps, like I said, I just bought on Amazon. You can buy pretty much any set you want. I decided to go with ones that were blank on the top and had the letters on the, the side because I think that would work and I've talked for a while about getting a mechanical keyboard that didn't have any uh, letterings on the top as it is just because I want to improve my ability to type. thought that was a logical, a logical next step. And I ultimately decided to go with blues with this because, well, one, I really like the way blues feel. And as a, you know, you're not going to really use this in gaming. So as a primarily typing-driven device, that's the decision I made. I was kind of really debating with myself between if I wanted to go with blues or the heavier greens. And I ultimately decided to choose the blues. Okay, so our first step here is that we're going to be both installing both of these connectors. This is the 16-pin uh, connector. This is the 10-pin uh, connector. They really only go in one way, so if you're forcing something, you're doing something wrong. Uh, the board right now is what you would see is upside down. So this is the bottom of it up here. So we're putting that in, and then I've got, obviously you can see it's propped up on my solder wire. You're gonna need some solder. It's important. I've got my solder and iron warming up over here. And we're gonna flip it over, and we're just gonna start installing. Man, I don't know how the other repair YouTubers do it with the, the camera in there, but that was a hard solder job even without the camera in the way. But there's one. There's two. Now I'm going to uh, clean the, uh, the flux off with a little bit of alcohol and a Q-tip. After that, we're going to be back to the keys. Uh, the keys only have two solder points. I'll show you in a second. So it should be significantly easier.
Okay, a short food break later. We're pretty much done with the board now. Thankfully, uh... Looks... Sounds pretty good. Hopefully it works. We need to install one more part soldering though. It's this tiny little switch right here. I doubt you're going to be able to see it. Let's I zoom really far into it. But yeah. We've got one little switch right here. It's going to get installed between the uh, right next to the on and off switch. The only purpose of the switch is actually to be a momentary switch. Or actually the opposite. It's to counter the momentary switch so that you can lock it into place. Essentially. Keep the thing always on. Keep the thing always off. Yeah. Don't know if it's necessary, but we're going to install it anyway. Just to be on the safe side, might wind up using it. Who knows? Okay, inserted the switch right here, kind of bent the pins back. Retrospect, probably should have done this a little bit earlier, but um, well, it is what it is. Should have done this also when I had the soldering iron hot, but uh, well, quick little solder tin there, and we'll be good to go. Okay, so our PCB is finally done. I just took the little bit of time to install the stabilizers. Um, yeah, and I have the ribbon cables in. So we're actually gonna move on to taking apart the uh, the Alpha Smart for now because this, I think, is pretty much good to go. Easy enough to disassemble at this point. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight screws. Just pop them right out and we'll get this cover off. All right, and uh, two ribbon cables later. Just pop this sucker out. Pop this sucker out too. And the old trash keyboard is gone, only to be replaced with the new assembled one. Get those uh, ribbon cables going right on in there. All right, that should be just about all right. So let me uh, plug in the display. Let's see if it still works. Hope if we had batteries in there, wouldn't it? It's fine. Aha! It works. All right, the momentary switch works here. Aha! Uh -huh. We have magic, just to zoom into the screen so you can see. I type in this is uh, oops. A key isn't working. Okay. That's why I didn't want to assemble this yet, because I knew that there was going to be something that I did wrong. So let me go figure out which keys do and don't work. Fixing the A key, for sure. I, I can't get it to connect at all. Diagnosis right now, everything works except for the A key and the apostrophe key. So one more time, I'm gonna take this apart, I'm gonna look at the board, and maybe I've got a couple extra keys, we'll solder them into place, otherwise maybe it's a bad solder job, but we're almost there. I am happy. Not gonna be easy to see on the screen, but woo, typing lots of A's and apostrophes, okay. Now, uh, just reassembling the screws, honestly. Because after that, it's keycaps. Now, keycaps are one of the more difficult things to find for these because they're not exactly customized. You might notice I have two space bars here. Um, but yeah, everything works. I am really happy about that. So the only difficult thing now is going to be getting all the keycaps. Again, I have my set of keycaps here. Like I was talking about earlier, they're somewhat blank. But let's button this thing back up and then we'll move on to that because also my wife has requested to do the keycaps.
Yep. It works. Uh, sorry for cutting the last clip a little abruptly, but we had to pause and make a couple of fixes because there was a couple of errors that we ran into. One, just simply we broke a keycap. Or not a keycap, we actually broke a key, so we had to go in and replace that, but, you know, we had several extras. So yeah, it's a little bit in shambles right now, and I think you can see that without me zooming crazy into it. Now what about we don't touch the lens, touch the keycap instead, that would probably work better. But yeah, so, keycap's a little bit broken, but it is what it is. The rest of it's repaired, seems to be working really nicely. We ran into an issue as well, and one of the things I ultimately decided to do was to take out my screw that's right here. There's a, there's two screws pinning down the thing, and every time I would pin down that screw, it would cause, like, my, my R and my T and my, like, these couple of keys right in this region right here to stop registering. So I took that out and everything was perfectly fine, I needed to resolder the 7 key at 1.2, because that's that much money. But as of right now, everything does seem to be working. And I'm really happy with the way things look right so far. Like, yeah, obviously some of the keys could look, you know, a little bit better, but... But from what it is, it looks good. It feels good, too. Like, it feels nice and mechanical. I'm just not used to typing on blues again, because it's been a while since I've typed on a keyboard with blues. But I'm going to get used to it over time. Uh, these clear keycaps we actually borrowed off of a keycap sampler kit that I got off of WASD a while ago that had a sampler of a bunch of different kinds of keys. So I was just like... Might as well use them in a couple of different places because they'll look cool. And uh, I think they do. Plus they allow you to see the labels that are actually underneath of it because that's ultimately what we wound up doing. Like, 75% of the keys are close enough labeled. Actually, probably... You could probably even say basically 90% of the keys are what they need to be. There's a couple of small ones right here, like Find, obviously. It's just grayed out because there's nothing like that on a normal keyboard. Uh, print screen became print. Um, what is this one? We have a, there's not a regularly a spell check button on there, but we have it. The file keys all became F numbered keys. And yeah, all the, the command option and control were a little bit too wide because they were the wider variety of the keys, so we had to replace those. No power button on a normal, key, normal keyboard, no send button on, on a normal keyboard. So we just kind of did that. And overall, I think it looks pretty good. Some of the keys are a little bit misshapen for what they're designed to do. What is this one? Right shift. Okay, so there's just a regular key over here on right shift, but it is what it is. Just because it's, a, again, a little bit small. But we didn't... I guess we could have used some of the other keys and just blacked out more of the keys and had them here, but I kind of like the clear because, for the most part, these are special keys and operators. That's my off key stops working. My off key's not working great. But, yeah, overall... I'm pretty satisfied. Sure, there were a couple things I could have done differently. I have to figure out why my off key isn't working, but uh, I'm happy with it.